Okay, in this video I'm going to show how to do a simple linear regression in Stata. What we're going to do is we're going to use an existing data set. So go to File, Example Data Sets, an existing data set within Stata. This window should pop open. Go to Example Data Sets Listed. And the one we're going to click that uses um, blood pressure wide, so click on that. Click on Use. Um, or you can just type in this command right here. All right, so we've got that here. Browse to look at what we've got. What we see is we've got gender, I've got an age grouping, I've got blood pressure before and after. What we're going to do is just regress um, the after blood pressure on the before, so the Y is going to be the after, and, and the um, X is going to be the before for a simple linear regression. Okay. First thing we want to do is look at each of our variables to make sure there's not any issues with them. Okay, sum. So I'm going to use a sum command. Let's look at before and let's look at after both. All right, in both cases, what I see is a mean, observation, number of observations, and minimum, maximum. Those numbers all look like I would expect them to look. I don't have any concerns. I don't have anything that um, I worry about here. Um, being unusual. I might also look at a histogram in each case. Sometimes visually that's helpful identifying any extreme outliers. I don't see anything. And in the after, in this similar way, I don't see anything. You see both are a little skewed. At this point, we're not worried about that. Um, we're worried about the skewness of the residuals, not skewness of each variable. So. Um, we won't worry about anything about that yet. And we also might want to look at a scatter plot of the fur of the two variables. Give us an idea ahead of time whether there might be any curve of linearity in the relationship or whether it really looks linear like putting a straight line through it is a reasonable thing to do. All right, what we see. Um, we don't see any curve of linear trend. You might look at that and question whether there's even a linear trend. If there is, it's not going to be particularly strong. In other words, the correlation is not going to be um, really high, but let's go ahead and, and fit it and, and see what happens here. Okay, the command to use for regression is just regress. I always put y before x in my commands in Stata. So my y is the after, my x is the before. Type those in, hit enter, and I get my results. Okay, this is the a basic ANOVA table that's used in this F test here. This is a test to see overall whether the model um, has, has done anything in predicting the Y. And you see that that's borderline. I mean, it's not, it's not quite 0.05, so probably not. Um, and then we look down here, we look at the adjusted R squared. Um, that's not very high either. When I look down in my table, um, I see my regression coefficients. This is the slope. This is the intercept here, okay? And you can see the intercept is statistically significant. That's of no real consequence or meaning to us at the moment. We're mostly interested in the slope because that's what tells us whether there's a relationship between the before and the after. And you see it's not statistically significant. It's fairly low p-value. It's approaching statistical significance. Not quite statistically significant, meaning we're not, we don't really have um, convincing evidence that there's, there's a strong relationship between the blood pressure before and after. We don't see a, a real strong linear trend there. The other thing that we're, we want to do often after running any kind of a, a, a linear regression is we want to look at the residuals. One thing we can do is an RVF plot, which looks at residuals versus fitted values. It's a typical thing that's done. I look at this, I'm looking for extreme obvious outliers that show up here. I'm looking for curvilinearity, I don't see any of that either. And I'm looking for heteroscedasticity, or in other words, a funnel shape on one direction or the other, and I don't see that here. So the regression assumptions so far appear to be reasonably satisfied. The other thing I, I often want to do is I want to look at a plot of the residuals themselves. And in order to do that, I have to save the residuals. After you've done the regression, and it has to be after, um, we're going to use the predict command. We're going to give a name to the residuals variable, which is just a variable for residuals for, for every row in the data set. 
let's call it resids1. And then I'm going to put comma r. So that tells me I don't want it to find predicted values. I want it to find residuals. That's, a, that's an option. I hit enter. Okay. You see it's saved here. And now I can look at histogram of resids1. I pull that up. What am I looking for? I'm looking for approximately bell-shaped. Um, I'm looking for that to not be um, real extremely skewed and or extreme outliers as well. And I, I don't see, I see a little bit of skewness, but it's not extreme or obvious. Um, the degree of skewness will, you know, impact the degree to which um, the p-values are accurate. So um, it could be a tiny bit here. We're also looking for kurtosis in there. There could be a little bit here. If I want to know if there's skewness or kurtosis, I can actually do a sum command with a resids one comma detail. The detail command on the sum will give me skewness and kurtosis. Um, there's not anything worrisome here. Extreme skewness would be over about two or less than negative two. And kurtosis, a common threshold is seven, negative seven. And so in both cases, I'm, I'm not real worried about it. So in other words, regression assumptions seem fairly well satisfied. Um, there seems to be no real problem here. Um, we can also run a regression using a um, binary variable as an X, a dummy coded binary variable. So let's go ahead and try that with sex here. To do that, I need to make sure that the sex is coded as 0, 1. Let's look at it. Use codebook command for that variable and see how it's coded. 0 male, 1 female is perfect. That's what, that's what it needs to be. Let's use um, the blood pressure before. Okay. And what we're going to do is do regress blood pressure before on sex. Okay. Hit enter. And um, what we're going to see here, again, a NOVA table. Here, a p-value, if you notice, is um, less than 0.05. So suggest that something in the model is helpful. And when we come down here, we see sex statistically significant. So we do have some evidence here that, that um, gender predicts um, the blood pressure, the beginning blood pressure. And again, we would want to look at at our plots, but it's a little more challenging when we have, um, at our residuals, when we have a binary variable like that. Um, you'll see what happens here is there's only two p a possible fitted or predicted values that are going to come out of it because there is only um, two possible x's. So the plots here aren't, aren't quite so meaningful in that respect, and this, this plot's not quite so helpful to us. Um, in many cases, these plot, these dots represent multiple dots on top of each other, so it's a, it's not, it's not as helpful to us. We can do the predicted values. Um, we're going to call them resids two comma r this time, and I'm going to do a histogram of those. Okay, whoops, I didn't mean to type that r in there. Okay. And in this case, what am I looking for? Well, those residuals look a little bit more skewed than in the prior case, okay? I don't see any extreme outliers or anything like that. If I want to uh, look at that, I could look at some resids, resids 2, and then detail. And skewness, again, is within the 2, negative 2, and the kurtosis also is within the 7, negative 7. So it's not, it's not a... Um, it's not a huge amount of skewness or kurtosis. It's not something I worry about. In other words, my p-values aren't going to be extremely off because of that. So um, again, this looks like it's fairly straightforward. It looks like it's okay. Well, we might want to um, use um, the age group here. That would require some dummy coding. Let me just show you age group as a predictor. What we see is we have three categories. That's ordinal, because the order here matters. Ordinal is a little bit problematic to deal with an X as the X, the independent variable. Either you have to pretend that this is um, interval data, continuous data, which would be a stretch here, um, or you have to pretend it's nominal data, treat it as if it's nominal, and do a dummy coding of this. In other words, we treat the, we, we create two dummy variables 
one that compares group two to group one and one that compares group three to group one. Okay, so that's another possible way that that could be done. Um, if we want to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to type in regress. I'm going to type in the name of the variable, okay? And then um, age group, uh, I'm actually going to do a, put an I dot in front of it. What that says, stands for is indicator. If I put an I dot in front of a variable that tells data this is a categorical variable, I want you to treat it as a categorical variable. Otherwise, um, it's going to assume that you want this treated like its interval ratio. So we're just going to use these as values 1, 2, and 3, which isn't a very accurate thing to do. So um, it's going to treat it as indicator variables, and it's going to compare group um, 2 to group 1 and group 3 to group 1. Okay, it always compares to the lowest value that's been coded with the lowest numeric value here. So I put that in here. And you can see this is technically multiple regression now, not a simple linear regression, because I, I technically have two, two x's now. And you'll see that it's got um, p-value here, meaning the model's doing something, okay? And um, over here, you see um, this, these two p-values, one's significant and one's not. So what you, you see is there's not a significant difference between the 46 to 59s and the lower group but there is a significant difference between the 60 plus and the lower group. Okay, so that, that's what we've found doing this particular regression here. Okay, and again, if I try to do an RVF plot, what I'm going to find is three stripes because I've got three groups. It's really hard to see anything from that, but I could do my predicted values. Okay, I'll call them resids three this time, comma R. And I'll do a histogram of those. And what do I see? Huh, slightly skewed. Okay, slightly skewed again. Is it so much that it's affecting the p-values? Well, let's look to see how big those are. Okay, let's do a um, sum. Resids 3 comma, whoops, comma detail. That's what I want. Okay, skewness here, well within the 2, negative 2. Kurtos is a little bigger, but far from the 7, negative 7. Some will, will look at this as a, will be stricter about um, wanting this at a, a lower value, but it's really the skewness that's the, the biggest concern here, um, if, it, if it were significantly large. Generally, when you look at a histogram, if it's too skewed, it's going to jump right out at you. It's going to be very, very obvious to you when you see it. So, I mean, so some basic examples of simple linear regression and one that's technically a multiple linear regression um, here in Stata.